Hello everyone and welcome to Room Raiders Presidential Edition. Today we're talking about the Mueller investigation and to get acquainted with this issue I've been watching Fox News and MSNBC. And the funny thing is, I feel like each side's understanding of the other side is about as accurate as this guy thinks white people walk. How's it going Jim? Yep, how's it going? Yep. Steve, Steve, hey Bob, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, I know people were doing coke at the time, but damn, call that guy's caricature an ambulance. So now I'm going to look at the issue from both Fox News' and MSNBC's perspective to see if we can come up with some understanding of each other. So first we're starting with Fox News, and we're getting right into the controversial den with Hannity tonight. If I were the president, I would at least seriously consider going to court tomorrow seeking to have a judge get a hold of all the lawyer client material, take it away from the prosecutor, take it away from the FBI. Don't let an FBI agent look at any of them, They've already have looked the at judge it. go through it and have the judge make a determination. Now that might sound certifiably insane to liberals watching this, but hear me out because this actually sounds pretty suspicious when you look at it from a certain angle. So when Trump tweeted out attorney client privilege is dead, Comedians thought it was the funniest thing since Kofefe. Trump also <laughs> tweeted, Attorney client privilege is dead. <laughs> well, it is for you. <laughs> because it turns out paying $130,000 to shut up a porn star right before the election is a violation of campaign finance law, and knowingly lying to a bank about why you need the $130,000 is bank fraud, and attorney client privilege doesn't apply if they're investigating a crime jointly undertaken by the attorney and the client. Well, I think we can end the episode right there. Unless, of course, not literally every document in Michael Cohen's office was related to paying off the porn star Trump slept with. I mean, I get holding on to some incriminating evidence, but dedicating your entire enterprise to solely housing incriminating evidence against yourself and the president is probably not what happened. This means that the majority of the documents that the FBI seized are protected by attorney client privilege and therefore can't be seen by investigators. So you get an unbiased third party to sort the documents so that the FBI investigators can only see documents that are pertinent to the case specifically the crimes that Donald Trump and his lawyer committed together. They can burst into the office, grab all the computers, and then give it to another FBI agent and say, you're the firewall. We want you now to read all these confidential communications. Tell us which ones we can get and which ones we can't get. So this is where things get weird for some people. So we have FBI agents now going through all of the paperwork that were found in Michael Cohen's office. Which means that probably 30 new people know exactly what the hell is going on in this case, and might be able to clear all this up without wasting everyone's time. But they can't talk to their co-workers because of attorney client privilege. Now this might sound scary and conspiratorial, but this is the way things generally go in investigations of lawyers, and if, if, if. There was evidence proving Trump colluded with Russia, maybe even did some of the hacking himself, or a P-tape. Could you imagine being the guy who had to read all of that and put it in storage? Oh, but hey guys, you can look at this document about paying $130,000 to a porn star. So yeah, I could see how some people would get suspicious of some of this. Here's the second point they bring up. I don't think they're partisans. Here you and I might disagree. I don't think they care whether they hurt the Democrats or the Republicans. Some on the team may. I don't think that's Mueller's approach. He is just determined to get his target. And when you appoint somebody to be a special counsel, there's a target on the back of the president, the target on the back of people close As he to lost the president. Respect. Now that might sound like a terrible argument, but these special counsels are the legal equivalent of trying to do research on Wikipedia at four in the morning. At first you got your Russia collusion research and you just headlong into that. But all of a sudden, ooh, there's a P-tape. Is that fetish a real thing? Oh, there's a link over here. And next thing you know it's 5 o'clock and you now have definitive proof that some people get sexual pleasure from rubbing balloons against themselves. This isn't anything new. It happened with Clinton in the 90s. Let's turn to Whitewater. This week, the uh, Whitewater Special Prosecutor, Mr. Starr, got a federal judge to extend the life of that uh, grand jury uh, looking into the Whitewater case. 
He says there's extensive uh, evidence of obstruction of justice. All right, quick confession. This was a little before my time, and every time I heard whitewater in class, I always thought, well, they were talking about a different whitewater. That special prosecutor was assigned to figure out whether real estate dealings with Bill Clinton's old company were making legitimate real estate deals or not. That didn't stick, so they tried to get him on obstruction of justice, which didn't really work either. Then he lied under oath saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And that's exactly why they ended up impeaching him for lying under oath. These special prosecutions are like drunks just kind of wandering around looking for trouble and prosecuting random people in the process until they get the president or until someone tells them to stop. And according to the Telegraph, there is no expiration date to the Mueller investigation, so we might outlast the Energizer Bunny and Trump's entire cabinet. That means that this investigation is either ending with a conviction or a firing. The last question that was brought up by Fox was an ethical question. The Mueller investigation is going to stick to uh, Russia collusion, the campaign, obstruction of justice, and anything else relating to Trump's business dealings, uh, any alleged relationships with payments to women, will be given over to the Southern District of New York. Now they'll work together. And this may be an attempt to squeeze Cohen. He's the lawyer. Mueller's team has been pretty good at flipping Trump insiders against him, from Papadopoulos, Gates, and Pinedo to potentially more behind the scenes. But what are the ethics to flipping a lawyer? I mean, your lawyer is a mix between your priest and your best friend, if they're legally mandated to keep your secrets, and that sounds awesome. You confess to them and get advice from them to keep you safe. And while because of attorney-client privilege, he couldn't help you find evidence against his client, he could sit in the other room yelling, hotter, colder, while you search. And the ethical implications of that are worrisome. All right, well now we got nice and worried, let's see what the people over at CNBC are saying. First important point to make is, because what happened today Michael, to Michael Cohen doesn't appear to have been done by Mueller's team. These raids today on these premises controlled by Michael Cohen appear to have come about thanks to a referral from Robert Mueller's team. A referral from Mueller's team to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan in the Southern District of New York. Huh. Okay, well not sure if that changes much for you, but if you hate things just because they have someone's name on it, well maybe give this one a second chance. Also, and more importantly, it means that this raid was, at least in theory, motivated by the crimes of Michael Cohen and not done to service a larger objective of getting Donald Trump in trouble, something he's perfectly capable of doing on his own. So this off-brand knockoff investigation might still be used to investigate Trump, but on paper that's not its purpose. So some of the ethics of this investigation are more ethically questionable in the larger context. Otherwise, it's just the New York City Department of Justice investigating a lawyer for his crimes based on a tip. So essentially, the Mueller investigation called the cops to report suspicious activities. New York Times was first to report today that the FBI raided Cohen's office, quote, seizing business records, emails, and documents related to several topics, including payments to a pornographic film actress. Now, before this, Rachel Maddow went through all the evidence that could have been in his office, although all protected by attorney-client privilege, because apparently there's no stronger bond than the bond between a billionaire and his lawyer. So, and this was repeated several times, the purpose of this seizure is to get Michael Cohen on campaign finance violations, bank fraud, and wire fraud, or as they call it on Wall Street, Wednesday. She tried to bring it back to Trump a few times, but legally speaking, the connections were so loose, I'm surprised she didn't bring out his tax returns again. One other interesting piece of this story did emerge though. So all of this led me to one question. Why did Mueller hand off the Michael Cohen raid? Well, luckily there was an article with that exact title. So there were a few reasons. First, these raids had to be coordinated, and raiding a house, a hotel, and an office requires more people than the 17 lawyers Mueller has on staff. 
Plus, I think the only time you want to go in a raid lawyers first is if you know for a fact that the other side is armed and dangerous. <laughs> also, some speculate Muller and the Justice Department are trying to diversify people participating in Muller's investigation in case he gets fired by Trump. Yeah, so this is like Muller preparing the Justice Department so he can pass on his legacy when he gets taken out by the president. Avenge me. Now, is it a good thing to rope the Justice Department into this investigation? I'm not sure. But if you can succeed at doing one thing, it's going to be making this investigation very hard to kill. Unless you fire the Justice Department. I yeah, wouldn't put it by this administration. Third, it's to potentially legitimize this arrest. Right-wing media consistently criticizes him for losing focus on Russia. So if he were to suddenly arrest Trump's lawyer for paying off a porn star, well, that would give them ammo. Although he underestimated their ability to completely ignore the fact that he wasn't the one making the arrest. Still, if he were to say that this arrest was related to the Russia investigation, well, attorney-client privilege might really be dead. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, hope you enjoyed that last video. Be sure to click the subscribe button to get my regular feed. I post a few times a week. And of course, don't forget to like below. And as always, thank you for watching.